Hi friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day. It is freezing here in Pennsylvania. I think it's currently nine degrees Fahrenheit and I thought it would be the perfect day to head over to Longwood and look at all the amaryllis that are in bloom over there. And I also desperately need to show you the Acacia Passage, which is my favorite room at Longwood in full bloom. But before we head out, I wanna show you the progress that I've been making to the new raised bed area. I also wanna show you my amaryllis that are in bloom and I'm trying out this mushroom kit and I'm curious, have you guys ever tried something like that? I'm not really sure how it's gonna turn out, but I'm just so desperate to grow anything right now that I popped onto Amazon and purchased a kit. So it was surprisingly warm yesterday, so I went ahead. You might remember I had kind of these rectangular pavers kind of making a step into the raised beds. So I removed those, I removed all the sod, and I picked up as much stone as I could from Lowe's on one load. And these stones right here, they were really hard to figure out how they went together. There were no instructions, but they're on clearance right now at my Lowe's for $4.59 a stone. And I thought that was pretty good. So I'll just kind of continue in this exact same manner, pulling it out into kind of a oval or maybe a circle design. So that's how that's looking so far. So I'm planning to just continue to work on this as time allows and mainly as the weather allows. My goal is that by the time we're able to plant our anemones and ranunculus out here, that this will be completely done. I'll have the deck done and I'll have the beds dug out. I really wanna get as much hardscaping done before the growing season starts. I think that's probably my best course of action in terms of getting all of these hardscaping projects done. Cause you know, once we start doing seeds and corms and tubers and all that, my focus really shifts. Rocky is walking right next to me as we speak. But let's go ahead inside for a quick second, take a look at my little tiny amaryllis show. It's a really nice show right now. And I think right around Valentine's Day is when everything's gonna peak. All of my older bulbs are gonna be in bloom by Valentine's Day. And so I'll make sure I do some kind of a video when they're all in full glorious bloom. Most of these are older bulbs over here. Here we have a beautiful apple blossom in bloom. That's a little baby bulb from a mother apple blossom that I have. Dancing Queen is still in bloom and looking beautiful. Definitely the star of the show right now is Magical Touch. This one is so beautiful, isn't it? And I've just been consistently forcing lots of paper whites as kind of a nice backdrop for the amaryllis. I have some cut Alaska behind Magical Touch. This one is so beautiful. I had purchased this bulb last year and it turned out to be apple blossom. I had gotten the wrong variety. This year I finally got the true variety. This one is called Rosy Star. That's definitely a must grow. Isn't it phenomenal? And then there's just another double Alaska there. And I put them all right here in kind of a nice cooler spot so that the blooms last as long as possible. Here's one more update for you. The bulbs in the center there that are starting to crack open are Double King that used to live in a window box. And then the two on either side are Gervais and also Flamingo Queen. And I had shared that what I was gonna do was not put those two outside. So basically they stayed inside as house plants all summer and then went into dormancy. So they are still going to bloom again. The blooms look a little bit smaller to me than what they have been in the past. And you can see that this one here, which is Gervais, only has one leaf so far. But that's an update on that experiment that I was trying. And then you can see all the pink low are starting to wake up. And those daffodils that we planted about two weeks ago are also starting to wake up. And here's a look at the mushroom grow kit that I'm trying. You're supposed to spray it twice a day and it says in two weeks we'll start to see some mushrooms. So I'll keep you updated on that. I just purchased this on Amazon for fun. I think it was about $30. I can link it in the description if you're interested. So that's pretty much all that's going on around here. I'm also about to start some alliums. I'm gonna force some alliums in about two weeks. But for now, let's get into the car and head to Longwood. Oh my word, friends, look at this amaryllis display. This variety is called Pretty Nymph. I've never grown this one before, but I'm definitely gonna head right home and search it out on the internet and see if I can find one. You know, it almost reminds me of a pink version of Dancing Queen. Please let me know if you've grown this variety. It is just absolutely delightful. 
Oh, I love this one too. This one's called Amadeus Candy. Really, really just subtle red streaking there, just on the tips of the petals. Oh, that one is taking my breath away. This one is especially beautiful, and I hope the camera is going to accurately pick up the color. I'm using my phone today. This one is called Fantasy Dream, and seeing it here in real life, I would almost say it's the very lightest shade of candy apple green. Here's another beautiful pink one. This one's called Rosalie. This one almost reminds me kind of of Cape Horn in a way. I haven't grown this one either, but this looks like another Musgrove variety. Well, I think I'm officially freaking out now. Here's a variety that I ordered and I gave to my mom. Hers isn't in bloom yet, but it's called Doublette. Do you think I'm saying that properly? I'm sorry if not, but it looks like this wonderful explosion of a candy cane on kind of more pointy petals. Right next to that, we have a gorgeous one called Emerald. That one almost looks like Exotic Star, but a little bit skinnier. Here's another one that looks like a Musgrove variety. This one's called Double Delicious. Really beautiful, deep blue-red with white streaking, a double here. That is gorgeous. They even have the Amaryllis Pretty Nymph tucked into the borders here in the children's garden, mixed in with different house plants, daffodils, and other flowering shrubs. Here we have Double King in bloom. You might remember that. I grew that one a few years ago. And then I'm so excited to see this one in person because I've seen it on the internet before and I wondered what it looked like in real life. This one's called Lagoon. And sometimes on the internet it almost looks like a red, but it really is a true hot pink. This display here it doesn't have a name tag, but I'd be willing to bet that it's Red Pearl. What do you think, friends, that have grown Red Pearl? Does that seem right to you? I'm not seeing a name tag on this one either, but look at the amazing salmon color that it has and these wonderful wavy petals. I love how they chose to display these bulbs. Let me know if you recognize this variety. Here we have another one I think we need to put on our must grow list. This one is called Terracotta Star. I know Longfield Garden sells this one and I believe they're having a 30 or 40% off sale right now. So I might have to hop online when I get home see if I can order a few of these. This one over here is also not labeled. I'm guessing it's Spartacus. Let me know if you think that's right. But here's the real reason why we're here, friends. The Acacia Passage is in full bloom. These normally bloom in January and February. I believe they renovated this area sometime in the late 80s but the common name for this is cinnamon wattle, and it really does have a cinnamon smell in here. I believe the smell comes from the leaves instead of the blooms, but let me just get you a few angles in this room because it's really breathtaking. So when we came here in December, they had these pots filled with white amaryllis, and they've since changed them out and filled them with a lot of beautiful fragrant lilies. These flowers are so cool. They almost look like tiny fuzzy buttons. So the tree trunks here are really, really small, and then they're trained up these trellises, and then they kind of meet in the middle, right above us. And I saw a sign that says they prune them after flowering to kind of keep them in check. I imagine it's quite the job to keep this looking fabulous all the time, and it always does.
Well, friends, I think I'm going to wrap up today's video here. Let me know if you saw an amaryllis that you're just dying to add into your collection. I think I saw at least three or seven. Well, who am I kidding? I need to add all of them into my collection. I just think I need maybe a third job in order to make that happen. Well, friends, I want to wish you an absolutely fabulous day, and I'll see you for some seeds starting very soon. Bye, friends.